a memory game, very reminiscent of the original Simon Says game of the 1980s. A fantastic game at that time. Uh, this is one of these simple memory games that, well, I'll show you, but it's got extra features. You have to replay a certain sequence of uh, lights. So I'll start by playing it. And after five, it will do something the original didn't do. Little round of applause. And it just keeps doing that. Every so often it will uh, do that round of applause. But the one thing it doesn't do, as the sequence gets longer, is increase the speed. It also has another sound effect. When you run out of time or when you get it wrong, it makes that sort of, well, the noise you just heard. Okay, let's take it apart and see what's inside. I'm not expecting a lot because this is a mass-produced game. And when you have a mass-produced game like this, I don't even know if I need to take this battery compartment off. I shall take it off. Runs off uh, three little uh, button cells. Are these LR44? Yes, they are. Um, there was an incident, when it was supplied, there was a label right across the speaker, which didn't seem like a good idea. But let's take these four screws out and see if it falls into millions of pieces, as these things sometimes do. Because this is mass-produced, I'm expecting there to be a very low component count, possibly just a blob chip. But I could be wrong. It might have an interesting circuit board. It is worth opening to explore. It has a microcontroller. Or is that a dedicated chip? Is these little rubbery switches interesting? Another screw holding this in. Is there going to be anything on the back? That must be a dedicated chip. It's got the battery, the chip. There is a little capacitor across probably the power rails and then the uh, speaker drive, which probably comes straight from the chip. Right, tell you what, I'm going to just doodle this schematic out and see what it looks like. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is done. Let's explore. So the construction of the circuit board is this. They have a chip that turns out to be a trsp 50808 a and this is a microcontroller with built-in speech facility, so they can store speech. In this case, they've stored the applause samples and also sort of ooh, 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 ooh noise when you actually lose. It also drives the LEDs directly and takes the input for the buttons directly. And because it's a speech chip, it just has two dedicated outputs to a little 8-ohm speaker. Um, the only other component other than the LEDs and the switches is the decoupling capacitor across the chip. So let's take a look at the circuitry here. We have the chip itself, which I did find the manufacturer. It is behind one of those uh, walls that you have to type in personal details to actually get information from them. They want your email address. No, nope, that's not happening. But the data sheet is out there. Uh, so it's got the three stack of three, uh, I was going to say double A cells, LR44 cells, the little alkaline button cells. It's got the decoupling capacitor. It's got the chip itself. It's got the speaker. It's got four LEDs and it's got five buttons assigned to these pins. That is it. It's a very, very minimalist design. I wonder if this is used for sort of greetings cards and things like that. It just strikes me as being one of those special purpose chips. But the construction of this is quite nice. The buttons have these silicone covers with the conductive pad at the back that spike through the circuit board and pull into place. And those are then pressed by the diffusers in front of the white LEDs. It's quite a decent construction. Very simple. Uh, but there we have it. That is the Simon-like uh, memory test game with its super minimalist circuit board standard chip, but not a lot of data. It seems quite specialist.